trance, pondering, and hypnosis, the truth about trance, pondering, and our abilities to enter natural states of what the world is calling hypnosis. We are far better equipped spiritually and mentally than previously known or understood. We are to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. This is copyright information. All rights are reserved. Part 2. The Truth About Trance, Pondering, or Hypnosis Understanding Our Inherited Natural Trance Abilities and the Benefits of Utilizing Them as Self-Hypnosis You now know the end state goal is to become clear and free-minded and maintain a clear and free mind with mind management. The next thing you need to know and understand so you will embrace and utilize pondering, trance, or self-hypnosis is the truth about pondering and what the world is calling hypnosis. There are many benefits to be enjoyed when trance, pondering, or self-hypnosis is utilized appropriately. The truth about hypnosis and hypnotherapy when accomplished for righteous purposes is what is called in the scriptures pondering and meditation. Please keep watching and we will explain it in clarity. A few references about pondering. Ponder the path of life. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord and he pondereth all his goings. Every way of man is right in his own eyes but the Lord pondereth the hearts. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth he not know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? But Mary kept all these things, and pondered them in her heart. Here we have examples of where we've been told to ponder, where the Lord says that he ponders, and Mary pondered. Our natural trance abilities have been called mesmerism or hypnosis. In the 1700s, Dr. Franz Anton Mesmer was having people come into his backyard and having them hang on to magnetic rods, attempting to reverse the polarity in the bodies of sick people, feeling that he could accomplish a change in the flow of their energetic content. While doing so, he was making constant suggestions to them of healing and that their mind and body would work together for their best benefit. This technique achieved significant healing results, sufficient enough that our own Benjamin Franklin, along with other scientists, went to France to investigate Mesmer and called his processes after him, and our natural trance abilities became known as being mesmerized, or mesmerizing or mesmerism. Ben Franklin though made a negative statement about being mesmerized saying that if these people get well it's simply by their own imaginations. After the committee reported their findings mesmerism and being mesmerized came under ill repute. In the 1800s Dr. James Braid an English physician was in the process of removing a cancerous eye when he put a candle in front of the individual so that he could see what he was doing. As we're aware, they did not have light bulbs and exterior light. Braid noticed that this individual went into a natural trance state and he removed the eye without any anesthetic whatsoever, only the anesthetization that was received from this person being in trance. He began to study our natural trance abilities again, but after the statements of ill repute that our natural trance abilities had come under from Franklin and the committee, he decided to change our natural trance abilities and name them after the Greek god or the Greek word for sleep, hypnos. So hypnotism and hypnosis has been derived from the Greek word for sleep since the 1800s. Now we call it hypnosis. Hypnosis is a misnomer. It is misnamed because when you are in hypnosis you are really not asleep. 
you're in a trance level above deep sleep. A rose is a rose. Trance, pondering, hypnosis, meditation, and so forth will no longer be a mystery. The mind does what the mind does. And even though many have attempted to describe different characteristics and experiences of trance, most lack clarity. We will give you our definitions and explanations of trance or hypnosis from our many years of doing hypnotherapy with clients and from our own personal experiences. We will make it clear and understandable. The first level of trance is daydreaming or we call it waking hypnosis or one of the states of pondering. The observable states of trance, pondering, or hypnosis will be discussed in this presentation. Daydreaming is being in an altered state of consciousness, somewhere off in our imaginations, memories, or emotions. We are all familiar with being in this state of trance. Unveiling the truth about the mystery of trance, pondering, or hypnosis. Until now, hypnosis has not been defined in any real clarity. There are seven stages or levels of trance that are all being called hypnosis, and each state has different characteristics and is a different experience. We know the advantages of each trance state for behavioral modification and personal problem solving. A group of individuals being hypnotized together will each describe the experience differently because they all went to different depths or levels of trance. When you group the people by the trance depth achieved, they will each report similar experiences. In this presentation, I will describe each of the states of trance and how to recognize them. In this way, the mystery of hypnosis will be exposed. You will come to know that there is no mystery because you are already familiar with trance, only unaware of your recognition of it as we experience it daily. Understanding trance. Trance then is not one phenomenon, but several fluid states of mind. We fluidly move from state to state, from moment to moment. Various states have different beneficial therapeutic effects when used appropriately in hypnotherapy. Since the experience of each level is different, different names have been used to name these altered trance states of mind. Two people hypnotized together in the same room will describe different experiences depending on the trance state reached. A definition of hypnosis. Hypnosis is a deeply relaxed state of hypersuggestibility in which suggestions more easily pass through the conscious mind and bypass the critical factor belief system filter. Predominant thoughts which are allowed bypass into the subconscious stimulate the behavioral producing functions of the imaginations, memories, and emotions. Hypnotherapy is utilizing hypnosis to access subconscious behavioral producing predominant thoughts and grant us the opportunity to utilize our natural decision-making processes which establish new goal-directed selective thinking. The mystery of hypnosis. There is no mystery. You go in and out of trance and experience it continuously going in and out of sleep. Let's clearly define the trance states and how to identify them through observation and experience. Observable state 1. Waking suggestion. The mental focus is outward conscious observation and learning. Analytical, logical, critical thinking and evaluation take place in waking suggestion or what we're calling consciousness. We observe, we learn, experience agency and choice, and are familiar with our belief systems. The physical signs are that sometimes when people are consciously focused outward, their jaw will sag, but you'll notice that they have an outward observation. I want you to look around the room, new and different, and uh, now that you're out of that kind of fog in your head that you described, or 
uh, that feeling. How does things look different, brighter, newer? It looks completely different. I, in fact, there's parts of the room I don't even remember having any memory of. And you've spent a lot of time in this room. A couple of hours, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's crazy. How would you describe that outward conscious observation state right there right now? Just one of greater detail, of greater clarity. A clarity, um, sharp. I don't know how to describe it. It's hard to put a finger on it, but it, it doesn't look the same. Good job. You've just broken some major fixations. And you understand that now from the other training we've done. Yeah. You're a lot freer, your inner mind, your spirit's clearer, freer, and uh, I see that in your eyes. I mean, the clarity in your eyes right now and what you're doing is, is really improved. It's really incredible. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Greater clarity of life, greater details, color and sharpness, greater enjoyment, more peace, self-empowerment, greater self-control. This is the state of agency and choice. Some people, somnambulants, need to be dehypnotized to come back to consciousness. Observable state 2, waking suggestion, waking hypnosis, or daydreaming. The mental focus is internal while gaze is fixed externally, such as reading a book or watching a movie, gazing out a window and so forth. The physical signs will be relaxation, there will be a sag in the jaws and shoulders, sometimes you will experience tearing of the eyes, you will have a dryness in your mouth and may experience an urge to swallow. I want you to just uh, go from state to state as best you can and let them see those uh those different states as you go down. Okay. Okay. So you can just close your eyes and just start the daydream right there. You might notice that slight fluttering of her eyelids right here. You might notice that urge to swallow and that dryness in your throat. Did you see the swallow? The benefits of daydreaming are pondering. It's a highly imaginative state. We become the hero or heroine in the book or movie. We consider new goals. We dream about what we want to accomplish or achieve. It's a great state to do affirmations. When do we experience this? While driving, we can experience what's called white line hypnosis. In other words, we fixated and focused on the lines going by, and our mind gets tired of processing all of the stimulation and we simply go into the back of our mind ignoring the lines but we actually trance out. It's the same thing as when we space off in a classroom or we drive right past our exit on the freeway. Again we do this when watching a movie or reading a book. Observable state 3, hypnoidal trance. The mental focus is, is that the mind is awake, we have awareness, and it's the best state for affirmations and auto-suggestions. We experience intrapersonal communication, prayer and inspiration in the early morning just as you're waking up mentally, but the body is still asleep. We become aware of our internal spiritual thoughts, if you will, in this state. The physical signs again are is that the body's asleep, but again the mind is awake. We experience total lethargy, muscle relaxation. We may experience single body jerks or ab reactions. As the mind releases certain thoughts and emotional content, those are released down through the central nervous system and that is the jerk that we feel in our body in different locations as the mind releases particular thoughts and emotions. They're short circuited out through the body, through the central nervous system if you will. Now to go from daydreaming in the state she's just in to achieve hypnoidal trance, all we need to do is add lethargy. So you can take their hand, 
And as I take your hand, I want you to just go limp and loose. And allow your entire body to start to relax. Allow your neck to float, your head float, shoulder sag, jaw sag. As your hand drops in your lap, just go twice as deep. Excellent job. Now, in this state of hypnoidal trance, this is where the body's asleep, the mind's awake. And she can respond to me. You hear everything I'm saying. You can speak to me. Mm -hmm. So say yes loud enough the camera can hear you. Yes. Okay. So in hypnoidal trance, this is a state where we want to put the body asleep and the mind still awake. And this is a great way to start to teach people how to go to sleep if they're having sleep issues, is to begin to teach them that your mind still get, can be engaged and yet the body can still sleep and get rest. From hypnoidal trance uh, it, to do therapy, we want to go into catalepsy. Now the next state below that is what's called hypnoidal trance. And hypnoidal trance is that state that you're in in the morning just before you wake up, when all of a sudden your conscious mind starts to re-engage, but your body hasn't moved the muscle. One of the primary signs of hypnoidal trance is, is that the definition, if you will, the physiological definition of hypnoidal trance is, is that the body's still asleep but the mind's awake. So it's that state, you're there and you're laying on the pillow and you haven't moved the muscle, but your mind re-engages and you start to have those thoughts. I wonder what time it is. I wonder if I should get up and look at the clock. Uh, I wonder if I'm going to be late for work. And yet it's a very pleasant state and the state that most people want to do their positive affirmations in. That state between dreaming and full consciousness, when you're passing through that state, there's a connectivity there to hypnoidal trance that you can learn to actually stay in intentionally and pray and communicate and actually enhance uh, your spiritual capabilities, if you will, in that particular state. The benefits of hypnoidal trance. We experience it in the morning again when we wake up as we're coming awake. The mind becomes conscious but the body is still asleep and hasn't moved. We are mentally awake and wonder if we have overslept or may question what time is it. We experience inspirations, thoughts of personal improvements, and a sense of direction. Hypnoidal trance is a state of natural pondering, meditation, and personal revelation coming up out of sleep. Revelation can also be given in a dream when there is an almost imperceptible transition from sleep to wakefulness. If you strive to capture the content immediately, you can record great detail, but otherwise it fades rapidly. Inspired communication in the night is generally accompanied by a sacred feeling for the entire experience. Observable State for Catalepsy The mental focus is conscious and subconscious functions at one and the same time. It's the preferred state we like for hypnotherapy and new decision-making processes. It gives us the ability to analyze and logically think and speak, as well as access to subconscious imaginations, memories, and emotions. The physical signs is that the individual will create a waxy mobility and experience a balance between extensor and flexor muscles. The subject may go cataleptic or have muscle rigidity in parts of the body, such as the hands or the arms. This concept of having conscious and subconscious functions at one and the same time is a very powerful concept. Now, catalepsy is a state where we're going to get balance between extensor and flexor muscles, and what I'd like to ask you to do is just pretend and imagine that we have a string and a balloon tied right here to this finger. And I want you to allow that hand to just start to float up as you feel that tug right there from that balloon. And feel that balloon feeling larger, getting bigger with more helium, tugging, pulling harder and harder on that hand, and allow that hand to just begin to float up. Tugging harder and harder. Allow that hand just to begin to float. Pulling on that finger harder and harder. It begins to float up very comfortably, gently, peacefully. 
the higher it floats, the more comfortable you become. The higher it floats, the more pleasure you feel in this state, and the faster you want it to rise, because the more comfortable, more relaxed, more peaceful you get, the higher the hand floats. Allow it to float. Allow it to come up until your hand just comes up and touches the side of your face. And by the time gets by the time your hand gets to the side of your face, you will experience the highest quality of relaxation that you've ever experienced right there. Allow it to come up. Tugging more and more. And as she's allowing it to come up and she's working with that, what I want you to observe as a group is that jerky motion and movement of her hand is that waxy-like mobility that we talk about in catalepsy and uh, that uh, actual movement as she moves her hand up is, is cataleptic which allows her hand to, to actually move in that, in that fashion. Allow your hand to come right up. Benefits of catalepsy. Again we have access to conscious and subconscious functions at the same time. Preferred for spiritual mind management hypnotherapy, behavior modification with clients, bringing conscious and subconscious into alignment. We can eliminate double mindedness in this state because we can now see what we are believing in our conscious mind and the disconnect or incongruency in our subconscious mind. And it's also a great way to do behavioral rehearsal, meaning we're making new decisions and deciding how we're going to respond to the same stimuluses differently than the way we have in the past. Observable state five, somnambulism. Somnambulism is the act and practice of somnambulating or sleepwalking. The mental focus is that it's a highly imaginative and suggestible state. The critical faculty is not fully functioning as the belief system filter. These people rely on others to make choices for them. Their critical faculty or critical factor filter, as we normally call it, is underdeveloped or lacking in critical selective thinking skills. These folks are mostly stuck in their imagination in a chronic state of trance yet we find them to be in very creative situations and employments. They might be architects, musicians, artists, graphic designers, writers, and actors. Stage hypnotists seek them out for the show as they don't have to hypnotize them. We dehypnotize natural somnambulance and teach them how to come to consciousness and start functioning from conscious agency and choice. The physical signs in trance is lethargy returns and their eyes roll up. And when it finally touches your face, you're going to release that hand, you're going to relax and you're going to let it go. It's going to fall into your lap and you're going to go even deeper and even into a greater state of relaxation. It's stuck. <laughs> it's stuck? There, I'll take the balloon off of it. I'm untying it now. Just let it drop and go even deeper. Drop. Excellent job. Now, if you can notice her eyelids, her eyes are rolled up, and we've achieved lethargy again. So now she's dropped from catalepsy down into somnambulism. Eyes are rolled up, lethargy's returned, very limp and loose, just very ragdoll like, and uh, very very deep uh, state of somnambulism. The benefits of somnambulism, highly imaginative, highly creative state, people are very animated such as actors, and you can achieve analgesia in this state, meaning that you can anesthetize parts of the body and even though you may feel some pressure, you do not feel the pain. Again, some individuals have been in somnambulism since childhood due to some experiences that fixated them in this level. They are functioning in a chronic state of being hypnotized or in trance. In this state, there is limited filter capacity, critical factor filtering, to block out negative thoughts and suggestions. 
making them vulnerable to suggestions and the directions of others. We have ways to identify them, and again, we dehypnotize these people. Trance does allow for suggestions to go more easily undetected through our conscious mind filter and enter the subconscious where suggestions will generate behaviors. But we teach you how to have conscious awareness of these thought processes so you are less vulnerable to subtle suggestions and have greater personal power and control than ever before. You will experience personal empowerment. Observable State 6 the Esdell state. The mental focus is deep trance and internal focus producing a lack of following suggestions and temporary amnesia. The physical signs create natural anesthesia and catalepsy returns. This state of sensory desensitization is used in intentional pain control. Painless childbirthing. Dentists use this in their dental clinics and pain clinics use this state in their pain clinics. This state was named after Dr. Esdell, another British doctor who is credited with doing over 300 open bowel surgeries in India in the 1800s with nothing more than trance as the anesthetic. Thus we have named this state in the industry after Dr. James Esdell. Now, Paige, I want you to go even deeper. We're going to allow you to do this on your own. I'm going to stop prompting you. I want you to go right down to the red beach that you enjoy going to, where there's no sensation left, just total, complete pleasure, comfort, peace, tranquility. Deeper down, deeper down. Add in all of the details as you describe being on the red beach. Add in the sun, the wind, to that place where you feel no bodily sensations. Completely relaxed, totally restful. And as we take your hand, you might feel just some ever so slight pressure. Harder. Harder. Okay. Sounds good. And deeper down. Excellent job. And you can just relax and the rest there as long as you like, and whenever you're ready, you can just come back and be with us. I have trained myself to enough to where I can get to Ezel, and it does take practice. And the more practice you do, and the more you allow yourself to do it, the better and easier it is to go there. Um, it, at first, the first time trying out by myself took like three hours. Now it only takes me a few minutes to get there. Um, and my happy place in my head is, I call it my red beach. And I'm You just the, meditate until you can get there and then you, I, you can identify it every time? No, what I start to do is, I, I'm very visual, so I start to pretend that I'm already there. And then all of a sudden I start to notice my body feels like what I was just on the floor. Um, so I start to pay attention to the sky looking red, to the sun looking orange, to the, and then to how it feels. And, and I actually start to hear the ocean. And if I want there to be wind, I start to feel wind on my face. And I just kind of start putting in more details and pay more attention to the detail and then I find all of a sudden I find out I'm there. So but it doesn't take me long anymore. Maybe five minutes max. Some of the benefits of the Esdell state 
desensitization, do sensory perceptions, pain control, again natural amnesia, natural anesthesia, clients will develop a lack of following suggestions, but there's a benefit in painless medical and dental procedures. The next state down is the Esdell State, and the Esdell State was named after Dr. James Esdell. And Dr. Esdell was a British doctor who was practicing in India, and he actually learned how to do an induction where the mind could actually have four characteristics. One, it would create a state of amnesia. Two, it would be used for anesthesia. The body would be disconnected from the mind, so to speak, and they would feel no pain. Uh, they would have uh, catalepsy would return and it would be this waxy mobility kind of a Frankenstein type walk if you will and then uh, they would have a lack of following suggestion because people who go into this as they'll say, say it's the most pleasant thing they've ever experienced and it's so enjoyable that they just don't want to come back out of it they don't want to come back to consciousness so this as state is a state that people go in and out of naturally as well it's kind of like when you've been sitting in a meeting for a long time and uh, the meeting ends and you go to stand up and you didn't have a conscious awareness that your legs were actually asleep and so you stand up and you, oh, and that hurts and you had to get the blood flow going back in your legs. What happens is, is that we can disassociate from any sensory perception with the mind. So we chose to disassociate from the pain in our legs because our mind was engaged on what we were learning and what was being uh, said or going on in, in the meeting. And we didn't really consciously reconnect, if you will, to the rest of our body and recognize that we had that pain and tingle in our legs until, uh, until we uh, changed our focus and actually come back out of that state. The Esdell state is also the state that's used for child birthing type classes and all of those types of things uh, that are being done. And it's also the state that we teach people to go into intentionally to overcome and control long-term chronic pain and uh, assist folks with uh, some pain relief uh, by teaching them how to actually detach from, uh, from those uh, painful experiences. And we all have the ability to detach from smell, from uh, sound, from noise, you know, those types of things. And that's another skill that we teach people in our, in our mind management trainings. Observable state 7. Sleep is the next state down. Falling asleep. We naturally go through all of these states going into and out of sleep. It is so gentle and natural we are not consciously aware of it. We do occasionally have the experience of feeling a falling sensation as we fall asleep. There is part of us moving and creating a sensation or sense of the feeling of falling. We identify it as our intelligence. Our intelligence is the spirit of our mind that moves from place to place in the compartments of our mind, allowing us agency and choice, responsibility and accountability for our thoughts and actions. The next day down from that is actually sleep. So people can actually go uh, down into deep, into deep sleep. So that's as complicated as we want to make that, but what we want you to recognize is is that you go in and out of those states every day as you go into sleep and as you come out of sleep. And we want to make it understood that it's not anything that the hypnotherapist or the hypnotist does to you. It's something that you have to learn how to do to and for yourself. That all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. When you are in consciousness, outward focus, observation, and learning, you are not connected to your imaginations, memories, or emotions. It is as though they do not exist. Intellectual suggestibles use this conscious disconnect as their form of amnesia and denial. When the intelligence is in the conscious part of the spiritual mind, towards the front and center of the forehead, you are in outward conscious observation and learning, or what we call consciousness. If the intelligence moves or travels through the critical factor belief system filter, once it is on the other side of the filter, we are now in the subconscious mind, containing our imaginations, memories, and emotions. When the intelligence has bypassed the critical factor and is in subconscious functions, 
you are in trance. The level of trance you may choose to experience is from daydreaming to deep sleep. Please come back and study this chart at your convenience. It describes the different levels of trance, pondering, or hypnosis. There are really six observable hypnotic trance states in hypnotherapy. Then there's deep sleep, making a total of seven trance levels. We've listed here for you the brainwave activity at certain levels, waking or sleep state information, and then the trance state by name as we just discussed and covered them. Again, some of the signs or characteristics are listed, and then we have the hypnotherapy utilization of each trance state and what we would normally recommend doing in that level of trance for therapeutic purposes or behavioral modification. So let's review our general understanding of what hypnosis is. You are going to intentionally go into these natural trance states for your own learning and goal achievement. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. It is something you learn to do for yourself. Will you lose control in hypnosis? No, you don't lose control, but most people do vent emotions automatically as when the intelligence goes back into the subconscious part of the mind and is in trance, it can connect to old emotions, hurts, and feelings that then tend to vent and release. Will I do or say anything against my will? The answer to that again is no. Even if you're working in a group such as one of my mind management groups, we use a code word of myself, meaning that if we're going through a particular therapeutic process and something comes up in your mind that you do not want to share with the group then you simply do not reveal that by saying myself meaning that you're going to work on that by yourself and then later on come up and visit with me at a break or stay after class for a few minutes and I will help you finish clearing that particular experience or if it's something of a major nature and you'd be more comfortable just schedule a private session to be done at a different time Will I remember everything about the session? Yes. Not only will you remember it, you'll be able to recall it, journal it, write it down, reanalyze it, think through it, because what we do is bring back all of your memories that are discovered to conscious recollection, where you can now challenge and change them, making new conscious choices around those experiences. And again, the idea is, is that we want to restructure, reframe, if you will, reconstruct the experiences so that we have new perceptions of the old experiences. We desensitize the imagination which collapses the emotions therefore now we've generated again a new behavior. Does a hypnotist accomplish the change? No, absolutely not. The individual client is the one who must do the work and accomplish their own work and their own change. The hypnotherapist simply acts as a guide to the processes and as a teacher of process to teach the individual how to continue to do their own personal problem solving after the session is over. What is the rate of success with hypnosis? The rate is actually 100% with everybody who gets in and does their work. It's your mind. You learn how to utilize it better, correctly, more efficiently and you'll get the results you're looking for each and every time. So what is your belief now about what the world is calling and portrays as hypnosis or our ability to ponder? Is it mind control or ignorance of understanding trance? But what about those people in the stage show? I could never allow anyone to control my mind but then again, I wish I could go visit with someone and have them remove all my fears, inhibitions, and my problems would just go away. I guess I wish there really were something that I could do to learn to control my own mind. But what do we know now? All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. Pondering in our minds is in the scriptures. 
people in a stage show are very vulnerable to suggestion and chose to participate in the show for various reasons. They wanted to get attention. They wanted to always be on stage. They wanted to know what it felt like to be an actor and so forth. Going into trance is a choice when we know and understand trance. Hypnosis is what the world is calling our natural trance pondering states of mind. We pass through various trance levels as we go in and out of deep sleep. We can learn to control our mind at these various trance levels for various behavioral modification, hypnotherapeutic purposes, meditation. What is your belief now about what the world is calling and portrays as hypnosis or pondering? Is hypnosis or pondering evil and a tool of the devil? Do only weak people go to hypnotherapists or can everyone benefit? Do you understand there are procedures where you can do your individual work and no one else needs to know what you are working on even in a group setting? We use a code word, myself, meaning you will work on it yourself in the group. And the way that works is, is should a certain idea or experience come up that you do not want to reveal to anyone in the group, you simply say myself and I go on and work with someone else and you continue to work on your own problem in your own mind achieving your own goals. Should you need personal assistance with it I will help you during a break or after the meeting for a few minutes. If it requires more time you can schedule an individual session and come back in and we'll work through it together individually. Do you understand that learning to ponder and meditate will help you make the changes you desire to achieve? You will have enhanced coping and stress management skills and you can become the person you've always known in your heart, mind and spirit that you are to be, accomplishing great things. But what do we know now? Hypnosis is good or evil, depending upon the use to which it is applied. Evil people attempt to use trance access to the subconscious mind to program illicit behaviors and for evil purposes. Righteous people use it for good and holy purposes, assisting others to change in positive ways. Hypnosis and hypnotherapy done correctly is what is known and described in the scriptures as pondering and meditation. How many times have you read or have been told to ponder and meditate on your life and problems and whoever has really taught you how? Self-hypnosis is intentionally induced altered states of mind wherein our thoughts are slowed down, recognized and understood. Trance is several differing mental states of deeper concentration and focus. We use relaxation to enter hypnosis, pondering or trance to access the subconscious mind and develop thought alignment. We are in various levels of trance during our daily experiences. Attend mind management trainings. These classes are generally 16 hours of training accomplished in a combination of online videos virtual online classroom attendance or in-person participation in Farmington, Utah at the school. We guarantee our work and your success with these processes, but you must do the work. To be successful, you must do the work. The work is watch the training videos and understand the processes, attend the mind management classes in Farmington or online, do the homework, study the course book, listen to the CDs, journal experiences of change, and learn to be happy. Learn self-hypnosis or pondering. Learn and apply and practice mind management processes daily. Benefits of the proper use of self-hypnosis. Self-empowering mind management self-confidence and esteem building, self-improvement and motivation, self-discipline, impulse control over eating and smoking and so forth, 
focus and concentration, sports performance improvement, memory enhancement, test taking relaxation, self mastery, freedom from fears, anger, guilt, pain, and is goal achieving through development of the conscious awareness of choice. We are to make all of our life's experiences good by learning to do good from the lessons learned from the experiences. We make our life good by doing good from the lessons learned from the experiences. Enjoy a free mind and learn to maintain it utilizing mind management. Join a 16-hour group of mind management trainings and get started on clearing your mind of past fixations and problems. Please schedule your personal attendance in Farmington, Utah in a mind management group or for individual sessions with Dennis at Advanced Health Clinic. Phone 801-447-8680 or to schedule online attendance of a mind management group or to schedule individual sessions of hypnotherapy online utilizing Skype and so forth with Dennis Parker phone 801-628-0693 or email Dennis at wdennisparker at msn.com please visit our website at certifiedhypnotherapytraining.com thank you we look forward to visiting with you in the near future.